All right, so printing with the Soval. This is my Bluetooth speaker shelf that I'm making for the bathroom. But what is something that you notice is a problem inside of this Krilty enclosure? It's really, really dark in there. You can kind of see if you put your nose right to it, but not well. And with the reflectivity of this plastic, we need some light coming from the inside. So I'm gonna try to remedy that. And hopefully the next print, you'll be able to see it really well. Here's my solution to the darkness of the enclosure. I'm gonna hang up this LED light strip from LaPro. I'm sure it's the best thing on Amazon, who knows? But you can see it's a dual LED strip on each segment. We have a bright white and also a daylight colored LED. I did hook these up and try them out upstairs. They're pretty bright, but I haven't unrolled them or anything. The set included this power adapter. Runs off of 12 volts. And supposedly it's only half an amp, so this is really energy efficient, like you would assume that LED light strips would be. And it also has a handy dandy little remote that also seemed like it worked pretty well. You can change the intensity, you can turn it on and off, and change the color of the light from cool white up to warm yellow. Looks like it's got a sleep timer as well. Also, I'm not going to um, install these with the included 3M adhesive on the back. I'd rather be able to take them up and down as needed, so here you go. We're going to be using these Velcro straps that I like to use so much. So I think I'm going to start out putting them up here on the top, shining down. And then I think I'll work toward the back up at the top. Should be 16 feet of lights, so in theory it should be able to cover the top. It may be better to run them down the sides, but this is kind of a trial run, so let's see what happens. Unfortunately, I won't be able to film me doing it, because like I said, given the space constraints, I can't really get my filming equipment in here. Well, nothing is as I said it would be, and that's because I ended up putting it on the right side and starting going from the back up and around and I'm not done yet as you can see over here still got some of it to go to go up this side and maybe end around the top I don't know I don't quite think I'll have enough but I had to do it over here because the power cord came with the LED lights it's kind of short and my power strip is on this side of the enclosure I only have one outlet along this wall so I decided to go ahead and do that put it over there instead of over here and up at the top like I thought I was going to but back there you can see it's plugged in um, I think this is gonna work out quite nicely let me go ahead and finish it up and then we'll talk more well it's all done so I started back here so the power cord could go through the cable hole. Came up, went around the top, then down this side, here's the bottom. Then back up, across the top. And then I had a bunch left over that wouldn't do anything else. So I did this weird thing at the top that kind of looks like some kind of janky chandelier and lashed it off over here. It's not the prettiest thing in the world. But honestly, I just kind of wanted to get it done. I think it looks pretty good. Um, here in a minute, I'll show you what it looks like with the thing zipped up. One thing I will say, this would be a lot easier if I didn't use the Velcro cable ties they're made for bigger bundles of wire and if you need to reposition once you get it snugged up 
and you go to pull the Velcro, a lot of times it'll spin the ribbon around if you've got friction on it a certain way, which is really annoying. Um, and you can take them off. They, they're not permanent, which is why I like to use them, but it was still a royal pain in the tuchus. And the thought of having to undo all these is, uh, you know, pretty bad, honestly. I, I wouldn't want to have to do it, but, uh, yeah, so I, I'm pretty happy with it. It's pretty, pretty bright. Now let's, uh, give the remote a try. The sensor is back there where it first plugs in. So if you hit off, it does that nice little fade thing. That's neat. I can change the color temperature. There's... It's supposed to be like a sunset 3000k 4500k is a mix of both and 6000k is the uh just the bright white lights on and then you can manually adjust the intensity that's nice but i'm going to leave it wide open and i'll either put it on 4500k or probably 6000k i like the the cold blue so now let me go ahead and zip this thing up and show you what it looks like closed and now you can see we've taken care of the darkness all right guys i would definitely call that a success i can easily see what's going on in there through this plastic all the way at the back around the sides the fact that this enclosure is so reflective really lends to uh, how well this works so if you want to throw some LED strips in your enclosure it does work the next thing we're going to do in another video probably the next one is get the webcam in there to take advantage of these lights probably mount it up at the top somewhere I'm going to use a small rig mount for that uh, let's see if the remote works through the plastic. Heck yeah, it does. So I can turn it on and off without even unzipping the thing. So that's awesome. I didn't even think the remote would be handy, but staying corrected. That's it for this video, guys. If you found it instructive in some way, entertaining, useful, or whatever, please give me a like so other people can find this. A subscribe would be nice. I hit 250 subscribers the other day, and for those people that have done that, thank you so much. It's really cool to have 250 subscribers. I never thought I would. And I'll have some links in the description to some of the stuff I used in doing this project. So, you know, I'll get a small commission from Amazon for that. Thanks, and you guys have a great day.